on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. So you basically, you would take them to an elementary school and you would get them um, evaluated. They go through a different series of different questions and tests and to make sure her speech is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And they passed her. And I couldn't believe it because, like, she was, like, barely speaking. And it was all jumbled up. Like, you couldn't even understand. You know, with that comes, you know, frustration. Yeah. So then they're, like, they can hit you. You know, they can be... um, they're violent, you know, unfortunately, because right. they're really frustrated. So they can, you know, start hitting and stuff. And um, my, she never hit my husband, but she sure didn't have any problems hitting me. But she at nineteen months, yeah, she would hit wow. me. Yeah, okay. she wasn't messing around. She was frustrated. She couldn't talk. Yeah. You know, she was real frustrated. Very, very hyper. You know, okay. and so like sometimes with the Aspergers, um, which is categorized in the autism mm-hmm. um, category now, is. Um, you know, ADHD, right. which, you know, later we did find out that she had that. And um, so we got her tested and they passed her through and I was so upset. And I remember telling my mother-in-law, you know, like, I can't believe they passed her. And she's like, well, have them go back, have her go back and test her again. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I did. I was Just like, like getting a third, you know, different doctor's opinions. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I would like to get her tested again because, you know, I just have a gut feeling, you know, mm-hmm. and normally when you have that gut feeling, you're right. You know, mm-hmm. Younger Carrie, sure, probably wouldn't have had those feelings. But now that I'm a mother, you go with your parental instincts and you have that gut feeling and it's normally 100% right. Yeah. And I just knew something was wrong. And so took her back and she didn't pass. And you couldn't get more than 19 and a half points and she got 19 points. If she would have said, mama, two, syllab- two syllables, yeah. they would have passed her. But she didn't and they fa- she failed. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, we've been together. Oh man, you already said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the dates. I had this lovely young lady on months ago, and uh, her episode was one of the most listened to episodes. I mean, it was amazing. It took off. As a matter of fact, I think it was Chris Reeves from Voices of Hope <laughs> said, he's got to come on and do another episode to outdo you. It's like, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, that ain't going to happen, Chris. Sorry. She's prettier than you. So, <laughs> uh, But I have Carrie Paradise on here. We're going to be talking about her daughter and Asperger's. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing good. I'm doing God. really good. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch base, um, you know, with the community just to kind of help people out that might have a child that, you know, is special needs mm-hmm. that might need some kind of direction or some kind of help with um, navigating the process of it because it is quite a process. Um, and You know, the early intervention is very, very important. That's the key to that. Um, So when when my daughter was younger, um, she was 19 months old. And I know you're not supposed to compare your children, but um, we had, you know, a a one-and-a-half-year-old little Mm -hmm. girl. Um, They're 19 months apart, so we have, you know, two little girls. One's, like, you know, almost getting ready to turn two, and then we have one that's, you know, three-and-a-half at the time. And, um, you know... She wasn't really talking much. Right. And especially for a girl, you know, that's kind of, you know, it's like a delay, you Mm -hmm. know. And um, I remember, um, you know, with, you know, boys can maybe take a little bit longer. But for girls, they just start kind of, you know, just talking right off the get-go. I mean, my older daughter started talking when she was nine months. Um, Wow. She's like her mother, you know. She likes to talk a lot. (laughs) (laughs) So, and she's literally a mini-me. And um, it's pretty pretty crazy actually to see it um it's cute i'm like wow she's just like me i mean we say things the same time and it's just we think the same things or like you know we were at the bel-air yard sale at flea market on sunday and like there was this basket and then i go and pick the basket up and she comes over she's like i knew you were going to go up and pick up that basket i was just like yeah anyway so um (laughs) so we you know we had some concerns uh you know with her not talking and um you know, we decided to get her um, evaluated. So right. you can you at can, 19 months. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And so um, we were, you know, introduced to child find, which I'm sure a lot of people are um, familiar with that in Harford County. Child find? Yeah, so you basically, you would take them to an elementary school and you would get them um, evaluated. Okay. They go through a different series of different questions and tests and to make sure her speech is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And they passed her. And I couldn't believe it because, like, she was, like, barely speaking. And it was all jumbled up. Like, you couldn't even understand. Um, And some parents are probably familiar with having that with their children is, um, you know, with that comes, you know, frustration. Yeah. So then they're, like, they can hit you. You know, they can be... um, they're violent, you know, right. unfortunately, because they're really frustrated. So they can, you know, start hitting and stuff. And um, my, she never hit my husband, but she sure didn't have any problems hitting me. But she at nineteen months, yeah, she would hit wow. me. Yeah, she okay. wasn't messing around. She was frustrated. She couldn't talk. Yeah. You know, she was real frustrated. Um, she couldn't communicate. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, okay. you know, it's she's getting her frustration out. She's you know upset that she was, can't communicate. Was that the with only you. thing that she couldn't talk? There's a couple things, actually, we had noticed. Um, she had, like, some low tone in her arms. Like, her arms um, felt, like, real squishy to me. And, really? Um, she very, very hyper, you know. Okay. And so, like, sometimes with the Asperger's, um, which is categorized in the autism mm-hmm. um, category now, is, um, you know, ADHD. Right. Which, you know, later we did find out that she had that. And, um so we got her tested, and they passed her through, and I was so upset. And I remember telling my mother-in-law, you know, like, I can't believe they passed her. And she's like, well, have them go back, have her go back and test her again. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I did. I was Just like, like getting a third, you know, different doctor's opinions. Yeah, I was like, I yeah. would like to get her tested again because, you know, I just have a gut feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. And normally when you have that gut feeling, you're right, you know. Mm-hmm. Younger, Carrie, sure, probably wouldn't have had those feelings, but – now that I'm a mother, you go with your parental instincts and you have that gut feeling and it's normally 100% right. Yeah. And I just knew something was wrong. And so took her back and she didn't pass. And you couldn't get more than 19 and a half points and she got 19 points. If she would have said, mama, two, syllable, two syllables, yeah. they would have passed her. But she didn't and they fa- she failed. And so wow. that starts the journey of now you can ha- get into the child fine. You can have someone come to your house, a speech, path- you know, speech pathologist mm-hmm. come to your house and teach, you know, give her speech. Um, and then once she turns three, you can put her into the school system if you choose to, or you can stay with child fine until they would go to k- kindergarten. And um, I wanted her in the school system immediately. I wanted yeah. her being social, being around other children. So as soon as she turned three, uh, my husband and I, we put her in, um, you know, the school system to have her services. Right. So then she was going, um, every week she would go to speech and then I go would get her into, um, she did, um, what is it? It was, um, occupational therapy and it was through, uh, they have an office up in, um, Bel Air, Mount Washington Children's Hospital Mm -hmm. had a small office. And so we would take her to an occupational therapist. She would have her speech. She would go to regular therapy. And we would, and gymnastics, because that was really good for her low tone in her arms to get her muscle built up. And my whole Fridays was spent, like, taking her to these appointments. And I That was all on a Friday? Yeah, on a Friday. We would just get it all done. Like, my Fridays, I was off, you know, doing the photography. I wasn't working in the recovery field yet. So I had off on Fridays, and I would take her from, like, 9 o'clock to, like, 4 o'clock. And we would just get all these appointments in and get her ready, you know, to go to kindergarten. And, um, you know, that's... That had to be hard, not just on you, but on her as well, I would think. It was really hard on her, you know, because it's exhausting. Yeah. You know, it's tiring for her. And, like, in the meantime, you know, you're taking her to get tested because you know that there's something's not right. So, like, you're going down to Mount Washington Children's Hospital. Yeah. You're going to... Um, trellis out in hunt valley to get her tested and you know these appointments are very hard to come by there mm-hmm. you know it takes a long time to get in with these people to get these appointments and um you know we get her all prepared and she's doing so well um just so proud of her she was doing so amazing and then COVID happened and oh she lost all of her services and so here you are you have um, you know, this child who has went through all these, all this therapy and to get her prepared for kindergarten and here she is ready to go to kindergarten and there's not, there's nothing. God, um, and man. then, you know, I was homeschooling her and that obviously did not go well, but, um, you know, d- along the way there, there would be like, um, different people that would be like, 
she's she's fine and yeah. and and you're like no she's not fine like chad and i always were like something's not right and she would fall off her chair or she couldn't tie her shoes and there was just little things that we noticed that were not right and As she's getting older yeah right and, um, okay you know, here she is in kindergarten, and now she's doing really well, and then we're trying to move forward, and then everything gets shut down. So it was really frustrating for us because um, we did put in the work, and yeah. we and she put in the work, right? And um, we were proactive about it and got her in services when she was 19 months old. And I, what I want the community to know is, like, if you have any, like, feeling in your heart or in your gut that something might be wrong – just go and get your child tested yeah. because, you know, if you wait till like kindergarten or if you wait till later in elementary or middle school, it's just going to delay that whole process. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a process, you know, and a lot of people are not familiar with the process. Um, and that's why I was so grateful to come on the show is because when this was all happening and I was going through this, people would re reach out to me and ask me because they had a child doing, had the same thing. Right. You know, they had a child that wasn't speaking. They had a child that was hitting or biting and they weren't sure how to handle the situation or if something was wrong or if they're just being a kid or, you know, you, or they're, they're going to talk. They'll be fine. They just haven't talked yet. And, um, you go, you know, you go with that gut feeling because, um, you know, being a photographer, I see it with children all the time yeah. and you know you have your clients that are really down to earth and really cool and like you're working with their child who's three years old and like mm -hmm. you've been doing this for 15 years so you know that this child's not speaking right and the mom will say yeah we kind of have some concerns yeah. and then I would say like well I have a daughter that had issues like that you know and it's 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 nothing um not calling anybody out on it you're not you know trying to put anybody down or hurt anybody's feelings like I'm just trying to help help people, people yeah you know just with the situation because um, you know, the resources for it, it's hard in, in Hartford yeah. County. And I'm sure you've heard that. Um, well, and you're one of the things lacking, too, besides the resources, are support groups. Mm -hmm. And you're being supportive. Yeah. You're helping people. Yeah, there is a real big lack. I, I do feel like they are more aware of it now in Harford mm -hmm. County, but like they wanted us to go out to like Owings Mills, Rockville, and I'm like, do you, do you understand? Like I live in Harford County, you want me to drive to yeah. Rockville for her services, like on a Wednesday night? Like how? Plus yeah. the driving you're doing all you know on Friday. Yeah. Too. I mean. Yeah. Geez. Yeah, but it was good. You know, I you know you have to do what you got to do for your kids. You know, yeah. and you know I have you know had these two daughters, and I'm like you know I'm not going to not get her where she needs to be. I'm going to do whatever I can. Um, and then, um, you know, once we had gotten her in, um, you know, elementary school from for kindergarten, it was just not good for her. Mm -hmm. You know, it just really wasn't. Um, you know, there's a lot of kids in school and they need these services and so do other kids. You know, my daughter's not the only one that needs services and fighting for that, those services was more than I could have ever imagined. I, I didn't realize that it was going to be so hard to receive services in Hartford right. County for my child. Um, and I'm not going to mention any names or any schools or anything like that, but it was a real headache. And, um, you know, I was really disappointed because, you know, my husband and I moved to that neighborhood for the schools to have our daughter go to the school. Mm -hmm. And here we are fighting for services that she and needs to have. And have to. I mean, yeah. she's diagnosed with ADHD, Asperger. She's got low tone, a speech uh, issue, and they're not trying to give her her services. Jesus. And it's like, what else do you need? And not to mention, not only did we have her tested at the school, but we also went to outside help at Mount Washington Children's Hospital yeah. and tre Trellis and had all this documentation from these doctors that she cannot learn in a classroom with 30 children. And the fight for that was just something I just can't even explain to you. It was just so upsetting and hurtful to know that you have a child that needs these services mm -hmm. and that you are you know, wanted that you got to fight to, to get. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, and you're tax, you know, paying taxes yeah. here, and it's like my child deserves those services, mm -hmm. um, and I shouldn't have to fight for them. No. Um, I mean, and, they, um, and you hear it all the time. Oh, we gotta, we gotta do this for our children. The children are the future. Well, we need to help those children too. Yeah. You know, don't be pushing them off saying, you know, oh, no, 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 they're fine. You know, no. Or, like, let's just get her through here and, like, yeah. let it be the middle school well, issue. I, I hate to say it, but that's one of the biggest problems with the school systems yeah. is they want to rush kids through. Oh, that's absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, look at how the kids who got to graduate with COVID. Yeah. You know? I mean, what, it's a shame. How was your other daughter with, while all this was going on? She was great. I mean, she's... Um, 
She's very lucky to have an older sister. Her sister yeah. is very patient with her. Um, Good. Even when they we were younger, when when the girls were younger, she would be great. I mean, there. I remember this one time we were driving to. Um, her occupational therapy appointment and she was so frustrated that she couldn't communicate with me and she threw a glass um kombucha bottle at my wind my windshield Wait, hold up back up a glass <laughs> what bottle like kombucha like a, that healthy like um, oh okay okay i was like what in the it's world like is a, a glass, kombucha <laughs> well because people are probably like why are you drinking out of a glass bottle right, right. You know, but it's yeah. it comes in a glass thing and okay. she picked that up and like threw it wow um <laughs> yeah, and it's like a probiotic drink. It's got like enzymes. Okay. In it. so it's really good for your gut. Or whatever. Didn't break the window, did it? No, it didn't break the window. Good. But that's like scary. You're driving, yeah. and your child, who's only you know like four years old, does that. Um, so wow. <laughs> yeah, so like once we got her talking, you know, and she was starting to talk. She wasn't as frustrated and wasn't you know like that. Um, but then comes other things with Aspergers, right? Yeah. They're very particular, you know. Um, I'll tell you one thing though, like Alana, she's sleeping in nowadays, and Arya's dressed and ready to go to school. I mean, she's her room is immaculate. Like she'll come and clean her room, and then she's this is your the daughter the of youngest. Aspergers, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. They're very okay. particular, yeah. Um, and so like she's gonna. I mean, she's going to be incredible. I mean, yeah. one way or another, you know. I mean, she goes by the beat of her own drum. She doesn't care what anybody thinks about her. She, um, she's a very hard worker. Like, if you give her a task, she's completing it. You know, she's very, um, you know, particular, likes to be on time. Which is pretty amazing, too, since because you said she's also got ADHD. Yeah, so, um, and she is on medication for the ADHD. Okay. And for the Asperger's, um, that is, like, they're known for, you know, they are very it's high functioning, you know, uh, so she's okay. very high functioning, um, so, which is, you know, wonderful. I'm, God gives you what Almost you can like handle, it right? Almost like in a way. It kind of does guess. balance yeah. it out. But when she was younger, yeah, it was a mess. Wow. You know, her room was always a mess. Everything was a mess. But as she gets older, I can see you know, her growing and understanding it more. Mm -hmm. um, you just got to be very patient, you know, and God obviously thinks I have a lot of patience because yeah. he gave me this little girl and I don't want to disappoint her, you know? Um, and like we talked on the last show, I mean, that's one of the reasons I stopped drinking is because, you know, my daughter needed me there to yeah. be present and to be there for her to be able to take care of all these things and make sure that she's going to turn out okay. And um, yeah, she'll be dressed ready with her uniform on. Um, we actually wound up taking her out of that school and we put her in private school um, at Open Bible Christian Academy in Kingsville, and she loves it. She has uh, eleven. Where's that at in Kingsville, it's, you know, if you're driving down Bel Air Road, that big bull that's on the side of the road yeah. on the right. It's right back in there. A lot of people really? don't know it. Mm -hmm. I never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, Open Bible Christian Academy, and she has eleven kids in her class. And she's thriving. And, That's good. Um, you know, they're Teacher not just passing her more. through. You know, they're not just passing her through, giving mm -hmm. her straight A's. Um, I remember one of the IEP meetings that we were in. Um, you know, here I am fighting for her services. And they're like, there's nothing. She's doing great. And, and you know, Chad and I are sitting there like, no, she's not. She's no, struggling. She's, not, yeah. we, she's our kid, man. We know that something's not right. And, um, well, she's like, well, she got, you know, an A on this math test and, like, pulls out this. And my husband and I, we knew how bad she was struggling with math. Yeah. And um, I had a math test that she actually did in my purse, and it was a 40%. And I pulled it out, and I said, oh, like, this test here, the one that she got a 40%, they don't have, like, a leg to stand on, you know? But you're mm. going from, like, you know, these, these parents, these poor parents are, like, looking for an advocate. So they're paying for an advocate. Then, like, they're not getting what they need out of that advocate. You know, right. they're not getting the resources that they need and they're paying all this money i mean we paid like 2500 dollars, didn't get anywhere with one of the advocates Jesus. and then we wind up coming across um someone had recommended mary siebert to us and um you can get a uh, grant for it why and do i knew that name she well she's she's the bulldog of okay <laughs> she is she's a, she is a special woman she's like the bulldog of uh harford county for being an advocate and okay. she need, she wants to retire but she's got all these kids and she's like they all need me she's in her 70s and she's like i just can't retire really? yeah she walked in the room they were all whoop you should have seen their faces <laughs> and mary joe i was like we got a new advocate she's going to be coming to the meeting you know this is like oh, do you want to do it at zoom no we're coming in like I'm, we're oh, coming in person it. right wow. i'm not doing this in zoom we're talking about my child's education yeah and i remember going to that meeting after all the COVID stuff and going 
went in there and they're like, well, this is our like our first meeting like after COVID, like the first one in person. Okay, we'll get it together. It's like this is your job. Like you were teaching our children like our education. Like this is yeah. very important to me to make sure she gets her services. Like if we want to have a meeting in person, like that's what we're going to have to do here, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting to see the dynamics of like Mary, you know, Mary Siebert being there, at Mary Jo. Sorry, let me get her name right. Mary Jo Siebert being there and like you know the principal and assistant principal um which then wind up leaving that school which that was real fun um after all that happened and my daughter God. didn't get those services um but you know that's okay like no hard feelings you know it's just i have to do what i have to do for my child yep. like i gotta fight for my kid and you can't you can't judge me or hate on me because i'm trying to do what's best for my child that's it i mean that's all i was trying to do and um Thank God I was sober for all that, though, because whew, I wouldn't have been there like that with that test and knowing all my stuff, you know? Actually, with you know, because with you working for ACR and, and you got a lot of nonprofits around it for recovery, do you know of any, any around for Asperger's? Well, there's groups, but there there was a, a facility that was supposed to be opening in Bel Air, and then like they couldn't get enough attendance, and so it really? never opened up. Yeah, um, but I do believe there is a new place that just opened in Abington. I saw it on um, on the Facebook business page. I can't think of the name right off the top of my head right now, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but you know, the other thing with that is you got to be make sure that they take insurance because then if they're not right. accepting your insurance, then you're paying out of pocket for these services. I mean, the amount of money that Chad and I paid for her to have all these services, like you know, you're paying for private speech, and then you have speech in the school because you're trying to knock it all out. So I had we had a private therapist that would come to the house. She had speech at the school. And insurance doesn't cover a lot of that. No, you're paying. What? Yeah. And then, and then you wow. know, even with the insurance, like covering those doctor bills, like at Mount Washington, is yeah. that for you? The, the the bills, the medical bills from that, you know. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You know, you got to make it work and figure it out. But yeah, then you know, we had OT, mm. <laughs> OT specialist, and then you know, you're you're paying for a tutor. I mean, it was a lot. It's, it's just a damn shame that the insurance insurance won't cover a lot of that. They covered they covered uh, the medical side of it, but not nothing when it came to like. This. But even the tutor, because that's part to me. That, that's like therapy. Yeah. That's that's helping them learn. That yeah, should then be you, covered. Yeah. Then you had the therapy. Some of the therapy that we had put her in, <clears throat> it was covered. Um, but know, not all of it. But not all of it. Yeah. You know. And then if you wanted to go see like a special therapist, you know, somebody recommends like, oh, mm -hmm. this person works really well with, you know, children with Aspergers, and then. They don't accept insurance. Like, well, you still want your child to go see her. Like, what are you going to, you know, you yeah. just have to figure it out, you know. Um, but I just wanted to make, you know, the community more aware of, like, you can't give up. No, you know, no, you, you absolutely You got to keep not. fighting, and you know it will come to a point where you will decide what's best for your family. Your kid can get the services from you know the school system, and everything could be completely fine. You know, I know plenty of children that have gotten their services and been very successful through school. Um, but that early intervention and advocating for your child is just so so important. And um, I mean, if you guys could see Aria now, I mean, she's just thriving. Is she? Um, has her speech now? Yeah, very she's good. good. Yeah, she's doing really good. Um, it's really uh, That's remarkable. Awesome. Yeah. And how she manages her ADHD, you know. Um, yeah. I know that she's taking medicine, but at the same time, the maturity really helps with all that. Um, you know, having the Asperger's and then, you know, having the ADHD, um, which is common. Uh, You're listening to Conversations with Rich Bennett. We'll be right back. When it comes to real estate in Maryland, there's only one name I trust implicitly, Daniel McGee and his victory team. Why? Because they transformed the typical transaction into a tailored, triumphant experience. Daniel has redefined real estate by slashing fees without skimping on service, making luxury affordable. More than just agents, they're like your savvy best friends in the industry guiding you every step of the way. I've witnessed firsthand how they prioritize relationships over revenue. They're not just about closing deals quickly. They ensure every aspect is in your best interest, delivering not just a house, but a home that resonates with your dreams. So whether you're buying, selling, or just exploring your options, trust Daniel McGee and the Victory Team to deliver. This isn't just real estate. It's real care. 
real connection. Call 410-652-6003. Again, 410-652-6003. Tell them that Rich sent you and start your journey with the team that turns every challenge into a victory. Hmm. Seeing her navigate that, it is very common to have both um, navigate that and understand it and just talk to her about it. Like, you know, when she was younger, you couldn't really communicate with her because she couldn't talk well. But now that she's older and you can talk to her, you just ask her just like a normal conversation that I'd have with you. Like, what's wrong? Honey, what's bothering you? Like, why are you getting all upset? Why are you getting all stressed out? Why are you getting frustrated? And I mean, it could be as simple as I'm hungry. I'm I'm hungry. You know, it's like, okay, let's get something to eat. It's like. Something so tiny like that, they will make such a big deal about it because they can't handle that stress. Hmm. They get really overwhelmed and stressed very easily. And so um, just keeping her calm, you know, and just talking to her and having eye contact and just making sure that she knows that, like, everything's going to be okay. You know, she, she um, you know, how I said she likes to go by the beat of her own drum. Um, it's like Aria's way, you know, and it's yeah. like, well, Aria, you know, you're 10, you know, I'm 43. You know, mommy does. I've, I've, had, you've made it 10 years on this earth, right? I'll say to her, kidding around or something, or like, mommy's made it 43 years on this earth. Right. You know, like it's okay. <laughs> you know, like daddy and I are telling you something because we might have an idea, honey. We, mm-hmm. we just might. You know, but they are really set in their ways. Yeah. I mean, it is like their way or the highway, and there's no like budget on that. So. Um, it's interesting to see now, like, um, so, so being so particular, like I was doing her hair the other day and I didn't have a pink hair tie. And I, as I was doing her hair, I was like, this is, is going to be a problem. It's going to be a little bit of a meltdown. It's going to be a situation. And I was like, um, I don't have a pink hair tie. And she was like, and that's okay, mommy. That's okay. Aww. And I was like, that is right. That it's, it's okay, honey. And she would just also like, she would do things like throughout, you know, her growing up and, People would come over to us and be like, you know, she's really special, right? And yeah. it was just like random people. Like, you know, if we would be down the beach and there's like another family, they come over and they're like, your daughter Alana is incredible, but your daughter Aria, she is really special. And there's something with her that is just something so special about her. And, um, you know, that's why I can't wait to see like what happens in her future because um, she is, she is. Uh, What's one of the things that she loves to do? She loves art. She loves to draw. Yeah, she loves to draw. Um, She loves music. Uh, Not much of a team sport player. We we went down that route. We tried lacrosse, soccer. Um, She does love... she does love art so much. We did some cooking classes with her. Oh. Um, she liked the gymnastics because you know, she's creative. Right. She really likes to be creative. And um, so this uh, fall, we're going to get her into running because it's just. Okay. That's an independent, right? Right. Short, and swimming. And so mm. she's pumped. She can't wait. And uh, let me tell you something. If you tell Aria you're going to do something for her, oh, you're doing it. If you're like, yeah, we're going to get you a new bathing suit for swimming, she will talk to you about that bathing suit until she's got five of them. And then you'll buy her five bathing suits and she wants more. Like, she was so into the she's art. She's got to love where you're living now, then. <laughs> and she's got to love it. She's got markers. Um, you know, tons of markers. I can't even tell you. She's got probably more markers than any kid out there. She's got so many markers. And it's never enough. And, like, that's one of the things with Asperger's. It's, like, never enough. And right. so there's a concern, you know. And, like, I've told Chad this, and, you know, being in the field that I'm in, is, like, you have to recognize that behavior because it's addictive behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody you're buying 125 markers for, and then they want more markers. That is a, that's a sign of yeah. addiction, you know. And so you have to be aware of that because um, it's never enough. They always want more, you know. And and that is a red flag. And that's very common. And being in the field that I'm in, you see that when you're working with these people who yeah. are in recovery, they have ADHD, they have Asperger's, they have these, you know, things that when they use drugs or they drink, they feel like other people, they feel normal like other people. So then they drink and drug and then it's a whole snowball. Yeah. Effect. So I think in a really positive way, you know, it's really good that, you know, I work in that field now mm-hmm. and that I am sober and I'm present and I recognize all of it because I see it, you know, I see it firsthand in the community. And then when she's acting that certain way, that's a, that's a behavior that she yeah. has that's going to, you know, could turn out in a negative way if you don't correct it, you know, and just talking about it. You know, just like we all do with our, you know, our AA meetings, like, you know, make sure you're talking about your issues, make sure you're talking about your problems, you know, reaching out to people. It's the same thing. So like sitting down with her at the kitchen table and just talking to her normal and asking her, it's good, does a world, it's a, makes a huge difference just to just talk to her like a normal person. So how many more parents do you know 
that have kids with Asperger's. There's, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and not just that, just in general, the IEP, you know, they need to have that from IEP. From around here? Yeah. So, like, I remember with when the process started, like, we would just be on the soccer field and, like, parents would come over and be like, hey, you know, I heard, you know, Ari, right. you were having trouble with Ari's IEP. My son has an IEP. Or, like, I can get my daughter an IEP. And sometimes they would be, like, seven or eight years old, right? And because here yeah. I am getting this IEP when she was younger. And it's like you know, three years old, she goes into the school system and now you have parents who didn't, didn't know Mm -hmm. and kept the child fine and didn't get them in the school system at three. And now their kids, you know, eight Mm. years old and now they can't get this IEP because they didn't get it when they were younger because there's so many children that need it. I mean, how many children need it, especially after COVID? I mean, the delay of their learning is across the board, right? It doesn't matter if you have Asperger's or anything. It's just in general, kids are behind. Right. Mm -hmm. So here these parents are paying for tutors, paying for private school, doing all these extra things because they're behind because they're just like you said, they're just pushing them through. And, you know, you're talking about our future. I mean, education is so important. It's like, are we missing the big picture here? Like, listen, I could never be a teacher. Okay. I I mean, I give so much credit to people who are teachers. I mean, Aria has been so blessed to have some of the best teachers. I'm we're so fortunate. But, you know, some kids aren't fortunate and don't Mm -hmm. have wonderful teachers and they have teachers that don't care or just push them through you know and that's a problem you know and it needs to be addressed because it's like you're not doing anything about it what like we know there's an issue what's the solution like why are we going to keep doing this round and round merry go round Mm -hmm. with our children's education is anyone going to change it like you have to stand up for your child's education or they're just going to keep going and pushing them through and um that's yeah, you know, a damn shame. It is a shame. It really is. And, you know, the, the whole thing with COVID um, was so terrible for everybody, but children really suffered the most from oh, that. Oh, big time. They really. Big time. They really did. The social aspect, um, you know, being behind, then coming back to school, then they shut down again, and then they went back again. I mean, it was just terrible. And we've talked about it before because addiction went up. Your, your the mental health uh, crisis went up, suicide went up, it, and it, it's not on a decline right now. No, because oh, absolutely not. now you have the COVID babies too. Well, not yet; they're still young. But I mean, you're you're seeing it's still affected a lot of people, and still is. Yeah. Because a lot of those young kids, you took away their social activity, mm-hmm. and now a lot of them don't know how to socialize. Yeah. It, yeah. it's and then it's there's sad. the kids that just like didn't go back to school right because yeah. they were like you know what i'd rather just learn from home so then they just you know did homeschooling or you know did it on the computers and then look at that like they didn't get to graduate they didn't get to go to prom they didn't mm-hmm. get to do all those other things like the high schoolers yep. that did that you know and um it's just a real shame um and i think that it needs to be talked about more i think yep. that the community needs to pull together um and make a change of that um, I know they're looking to put a trade school here, I think, over in Edgewood, I heard. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. They just need to bring the trades back into the schools, yes. period. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I mean, when I went to school, we had wood shop, metal yeah. shop, and all uh, me that. me too. You know, well, they I, need to bring all that back. I love back. that. Tech ed. Hey, here, okay, I, I want to ask you this because this is something that everybody I've talked to really never asked this question, and I should. But with your daughter... What's one of the biggest things you learned, not about her, but from her? Patience. Really? Okay. I mean, I've always had pretty good patience because I photograph newborns. Right. Um, But understanding her Mm -hmm. and, you know, getting upset and yelling doesn't work. Right. You know, so just kind of taking a deep breath and, like, having that composure and then just, like I said, just talking to her like normal. What a difference. Yeah. You know, because, listen, we're all parents. We all get frustrated. We all have our moments, right? You know, I'm not – no one to judge. Trust right. me. I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know. You know, the neighbor, and you're yelling. Your kid's running down the street, and you're trying to get him in the car. And your neighbor's like, hey. And you look like a crazy person. Like, Aria, get in the car. You know, and, and it can be hectic sometimes. But the biggest thing I learned from her is – um perseverance because she never gives up she never does and uh she just keeps going at it and um it's pretty incredible to see her now like she just wants to learn like i took them kayaking this weekend right and she hadn't really been and um i'm showing her how to do it and she's 
really wants to learn it. She's right. like, Mom, show me how to do it. And it's like, okay. And so I'm doing it with her, with her paddle and her, she's doing it at the same time. And then we're, we have like a thing, like my daughter, my older daughter, Alana, was like one was this, the right side and two was the left side. So it was like one, one, two. And then like, you know, if the kind of uh-huh. goes away, we're like two, two, one. And Ari got it. And I was like, man, and I, I and like playing soccer, you know, she used to play soccer for Kristen Priscilla. And, um, she just gets the ball and score. She doesn't want to be a team player. She just wants to take the ball and go, you know. But that's, you don't, it's, you got to just teach her, you know. She just needs to be coached. But when Ari doesn't want to do something, she doesn't want to do it. She's, she's done. Like when I said that beat of her own drum, she's like, I'm not playing soccer. I don't want to do anything to do with that. I was like, okay, we're done soccer. And she did horseback riding, lacrosse. We did art classes, cooking classes. She's like, I'm not really feeling that cooking anymore. I'm like, okay. Like, she's like, wow. on to the next thing. But it's good. Like, let does, them try and you, everything. Huh? Is, and you, does, she does gymnastics, or is that your other daughter? She did gymnastics. They both did gymnastics okay. for a few, quite a few years when they were younger. Um, but now, um, Alana plays soccer, and then okay. Aria is going to be doing the swimming and the running. I'm sure that's going to be you, you know, know you know it's going to be one of the next things uh, dance no we're not no we're past the dance i missed it thank god oh, okay. for all those moms out there that are dance and cheerleader moms i give you credit i don't know how you do it i can never oh my gosh no Mm-mm. we're dancing our kitchen together we got it okay we're good yeah they would have probably got into that when they were like you know five six we i think we missed it chad and i are like i think we missed it you know because like Okay, we're now, you said she likes music. Does she like playing music or just listening to it? Um, she just likes listening to it right now. She's going into fifth grade, so uh, she, the instrument might come out. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Sometimes her coordination's not, you know, where it probably would need to be. But who kn- you never know, right? Hey, she surprises us every single day. I mean, there right. is not a day that goes by. And she's so witty. And, like, when you don't think she's listening, oh, she's listening. And she'll right. just, like, say, you know, like... Oh, that was exceptional. And we're like, what? <laughs> we're like, she'll just come up with this like really big word and she'll say something. And it's like the perf- it, the, the word fits with whatever we're yeah. talking about or something. And we're like, where did that come from? Like, she's smarter than all of us, really. is what She thinks we're a bunch of idiots. She's like, you people have no idea. I know more than any of you. You know, like oh, she just God. sees things differently, you know. Um, and that's why they have to be taught differently. And that's yeah. why they have to be in smaller classrooms. And then there's just, you know, everybody ticks a different way, you know. And it's just you got to... You know, you got to figure out what makes your child tick and just advocate for them Mm -hmm. and just make sure that, you know, you're just trying to do the best job you can for them because you're the parent, you know. They got all these other children, um, and it's hard for the teachers and for the school system to keep up with it. So you have to advocate for your child. I mean, that's bottom line. You guys are doing an awesome job. Yeah, she's, um, gosh, I should have you meet her. You would love her. She's something. Everyone's always like, and that's the other thing. Like, Chad and I would She could sit here with, with us on, a, on an episode and join oh, in. Oh, she would. Oh, she would. She'd love probably it. take she, over. She would take over. Okay, that's fine. She, I've she had would. it happen before with she, kids. <laughs> she is something. Um, I remember, um, you know, like, you know, Chad and I, we would, like, say, like, certain things or whatever. And then Aria, she would just, um, you know, be so witty and just like know it and say it or mm-hmm. whatever and just kind of like you know shock you and surprise you and it's like every single day it's something new it's like she she's never it's never a dull moment you know yeah. good or bad you know and it's like kids are kids too right mm-hmm. it's like um you know don't have expectations and you won't be disappointed really i mean like people have all these expectations and then they're disappointed it's like look just live in the moment just enjoy the day and just try to live your life the best you can and do the best you can as a parent and have your child go along on the journey with you i mean that's really all you can do and um we we had an experience um she was four and Alana was six. And, you know, as a parent, you know, I'd take her kids to Disney World. And um, I remember when she, we got on the, on the bus, um, we had a breakfast in the morning and it was like $25 waffles. And I was like, this is going to be good. Damn. Yeah, Mickey Mouse <laughs> waffles. Oh. And um, she threw up all over the table. And I didn't even know what to do. I just took the tray and just like threw it in the trash can. And we get on this bus. And it is hot. You know, I'm one of those crazy moms that, like, went spring break because we were going to go to Florida and see my, my parents afterwards. And it's so hot. We're the second to last people to get on this bus. And we get on. There's no air conditioning. It's so hot. Oh, God. And Aria just starts throwing up all over Chad. And he's, oh. like, he's like trying to catch it in his shirt. Oh, and, God. I mean, it's, and this is before COVID, so people were actually friendly.
cleanly and handing right. you wipes and sanitizer and stuff. And we get off there. I mean, we look like crazy people. We have my husband has no shirt. Ari has no shirt. Security guard wants to take us back to our resort. We're like, no, we have a ride at the fast part uh, at the um, fast pass, whatever it was called. What is, what is it? <laughs> I don't know. Fast, I've never... <laughs> have you ever been down there? That, well, that um, what is it when you? Um, I think it's a fast pass where you don't have to wait in line. Okay. For a Almost like an easy pass for the tolls, but it's a fast pass. <laughs> yeah. go. Gotcha. <laughs> and you don't have to wait in line. So we had like one at like 10, 20 in the morning, and it was all the way in the back of the park because you start at the back. My right. girlfriend was like really into Disney World and helped me plan the trip. And um, so here we are walking, thousands of people walking in Disney World. I didn't have expectations, but I did think we would walk into Disney World as a family and see the Magic Kingdom. Just thought. Right. Maybe. Just, I mean, just something little. <laughs> no. I'm walking in with Alana, Chad's with Aria, no shirt, waiting outside. And I'm going into the Emporium gift shop to get a, um, shirts and all everything. And I walk in and I just start crying. And the lady's like, oh, it's okay. How can I help you? I'm with my daughter. She's like throwing up. And, uh, and she's like, it's okay. And like she gives me like shirts and can of sanitizer wipes and says, this is on Mickey. And I'm just like, oh, my oh, gosh, wow. this is so kind. Well, they don't want you leaving. You know, they don't. Well, they, yeah, they, they know you're going to yeah. spend probably two grand there that day. And we walk out and the security guard comes over. He's like, Mrs. Paradise. And I was like, yeah, he's like, I have your um, husband and daughter over in the gift shop. And um, I gave him free shirts. And I was like, you don't have to do that. They already did that. And he was like, and here's free fast passes. You can ride the rides all day and not wait in line. So there's wow. the trick, Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad, you hear that? You just have your kid throw up on you. <laughs> and you can go into Disney World with no waiting in lines. Because it was crazy. Like, Chad and I were like, are these people really waiting two and a half hours in line to go on a go-kart? Uh -huh. With your young children, you're waiting two and a half hours. How are you doing that? Like, how are you waiting two and a half hours in a line in the hot heat mm -hmm. to go on a go Packed. The place is a zoo, right? That's why you should go in October. <clears throat> Needless to say, we are not Disney World people. We do not. Do, we're not doing Disney anymore. But it was a great experience. And I tell you, Ari was in this phase that that at that age where she would do this thing with her nose, where she would like scrunch it up. And I've never seen our daughter smile so big. I mean, she's literally in this Magic Kingdom, right? Because you know, my girlfriend's like, "Oh, you got to have the Magic Kingdom lunch with the princesses." Oh, great. Yeah, I get a <laughs> fortune later. Oh, this is a great idea. She's sitting here with her autograph book and her pen, and she's like. She's smiling so oh, big God. with these princesses, and it was all worth it to me because yeah. seeing that, you just know, seeing just seeing the smile alone, it was just yeah. priceless, you know, and like you can never replace that, you no. know, you cannot. And it was just, it was so worth it. And um, then we did, you know, we did the Animal Kingdom for Alana because she kind of likes that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, getting them outside, they, you know, they love to be outside. So getting those kids <laughs> outside is so big, especially for yeah. children with Asperger's. You know, they like to explore, you know, their brains are constantly, you know, moving so it's like you know disney world was probably like heaven for her she was probably like this is like <laughs> i'm i'm yeah i'm glad i never i'm like this is so there, overwhelming my daughter she's got like in scared heaven. of chuck e cheese yeah oh, she God. i get scared Mickey, of chuck man, e. she would have freaked out <laughs> Arya loved it she loved everything about it she did wow she really did she really took she really took to it um it was really special so i can see why parents yeah. you know love to go there um but man you got to take like a second mortgage on your house to go there nowadays. <laughs> and my neighbors go uh, at I least know. once I, a year. I know a lot of people who go all the time. I know. I don't know. They must have a timeshare or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I went there one time, but it wasn't for to go into Disney World, even though we stayed at, the, I guess, the resort. Disney Springs? Was, or? No, I don't know. It was me and a buddy. Of mine. We went down for the Viper Nationals in 96. Okay. And Chrysler put it on and. You know, we stayed there and then planted Hollywood when that was a thing, but never went inside the park for anything. Because oh. like, the whole time we're down there, it's just you're either racing, eating, yeah, whatever. Saw, hey. the, saw the Beach Boys, though. That oh, was you pretty, did? 1,200. Yeah, it was like 1,200 people there. When you didn't have kids with you either. So well, uh, well, my daughter wasn't born yet, but my son was because okay. my son was big into, but he was at the time, the Hercules cars. and... Oh, okay. Who was the uh, Pumbaa th uh, Lion King? Oh. Yeah. So he was big into that. But no, he wasn't. It, he, he did wasn't he not with come me. with you? No. It, yeah. it was me and a friend of mine that okay. went down. Yeah. At all. But, uh, so, he, yeah, he's not there. You uh, my guys... son's been there before. I think he liked it. Yeah. Well, you and your buddy aren't going to go to Disney World together. Okay. I ain't, no. No. no right? No. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right, so I got some homework for you now. Okay. Oh, boy. 
Yeah. It's easy. Put it on the list. If they're interested, I want you to talk to some other people. Yeah. That have kids. Sure. With Asperger's. Yeah. Maybe get three or four more, and yeah. let's do a roundtable discussion about yeah, it. Yeah, and it doesn't because everybody's have... experience is different. Yeah, absolutely, and it doesn't even have to just be Asperger's. It could just be, um, you know, delay, speech delay, like yeah. education. It doesn't and, have well, to necessarily anything be Asperger's. autism too. Yeah. Yeah, it you could know. just be a learning disability. Yeah. Really, you can just say across the board learning disability. Man, I'm going to be keeping you busy a lot, aren't I? I like I like to stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that. Me too. I like to stay busy. Me too. You have anything to add, Carrie? No, no. I just really appreciate you having me on the show, and you know, hopefully, I um, you know gave some advice to some parents that might be you know struggling. I learned a lot. And looking for um, you know an outlet to get their kids some resources, you know. Um, because that early intervention is super yeah. important. And actually, those of you listening, if you have any questions about it, then just contact me and let me know. Um, and that way, when we do it again, because it would be better. Like, if we have a group of people, I can bring the questions up, and we can discuss it. Yeah, so. that'd be great. Hmm, sounds good to me. Okay, cool. Thanks, Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. I want to thank my guests for coming on this episode, but I really want to thank you for listening. And I would really appreciate it if you left a review about the show or about this episode. And you can actually do that right from the website. Go to conversationswithrichbennett.com. You can leave a comment about this episode. You can leave a review for the podcast in general. Another thing I would love for you to do, of course, follow us on social media. But send me a voicemail. If there is somebody you want me to get on the show, if you want to come on the show, if there is something you would like for us to discuss, send a voicemail or send an email. If you send a voicemail, if you want, I can actually play it back on a show too. So just saying. Uh, but no, seriously, I, I want to thank you for listening because if it wasn't for you, the podcast wouldn't be as successful as it is. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. So I am sitting here today. I have a young lady on that is a very talented photographer, Emily Adolph. And she's got something very special, especially if you run a nonprofit. Oh, she's got something special for you. But if you just need photography in general, you want to get a hold of her. So how are you doing, Emily? I'm doing good, Rich. Thank you for having me on today. Oh, my pleasure. Tell us what it is that you are, this special that you're running. Yeah. so Special from, for special people because you're special, right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm offering is free photography services to nonprofits here in Harford County. And mm -hmm. um, initially I was running it from now until the end of June, but what I've decided to do is extend it out. Um, so now I'm right. offering it from now until um, the end of August. So until August 31st, that, that, you know, weekend um, figured, you know, it's a, it's a busy time of year season for mm -hmm. you know nonprofits having events in the summertime. Um, but yeah, really just want to support, help nonprofits capture, you know, moments and, and the, um, experiences of the events that they're hosting without having to, you know, worry about funding the photographer. Right. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about, you know, what I'm, I'm giving back to the community. Which is great because a lot of your nonprofits don't take photos of their events yeah. and they should be on their websites. I agree. You I know, agree. even for upcoming events, you know, it's nice if you had the photos from last year to, to ask, Hey, look, this is what we're doing. This is how good it is. Yeah. And also, but you also do other types of photography in case somebody wants to hire you, right? I do. Yeah, I do portraits, families, event, you know, other events, musicians, bands. Those are my my key focuses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how does somebody hire you? How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, they would just go to my website. So it's www.emilyadolf.com. So that's E M I L Y A D O L P H dot com. Well, first of all, thank you for doing that because that's awesome. Thank and you. especially now, for, a lot of your nonprofits are struggling yeah. because you're just like all of us, inflation's hitting them hard. Yep. You know, and you have, you know, some venues around that shut down. So some of them are struggling to find a place. And yep. here you are reaching out to help. And for those of you that don't know about Emily, this is, Emily just loves to help people out. Yeah, I do. So. Help her out as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hire her for your photography needs. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Rich.